Welcome back to the channel, Sasquatch Prospector here. So, we got a bit of an interesting one. So, you saw my Charger video driving around Burnaby Mountain there. Um, you'll know that my power wagon has been out of commission for about nine months now. Um, torque converter issues, you know, typical Ram 2500 stuff. Everybody that's been around 2500 knows. So, I got a call from the dealer and um, it's ready. Transmission's in, or torque converter's in, it's been fixed, so I'm gonna go pick it up. And I'm gonna drop off the uh, the rental at the car dealer, but it's bittersweet, you know, because uh, we've we've had some we've had some good times, guys. We've uh, we've done some driving of various different vehicles, right? I had that 3.6 liter V6 Durango, all wheel drive, right? A little bit of off roading, not not a bad car. Didn't have a hitch, but whatever, we we're gonna tow with it anyways. Then moved on to 5.7 liter V8 Hemi on the uh, 1500, Ram 1500, right? Silver 1500 I had. Air suspension on that one, that was a good one. <clears throat> I really enjoyed that one. And then we had this, right? The Another 3.6 liter V6, that kind of good old tried and true Pentastar, right? Um, in the Charger, didn't get the V8, but you know, whatever, it's, it's all good. Um, the V8 would have been more fun though, I must say. So, getting the power wagon back, like I said, bittersweet. I was gonna test drive the Challenger, but but you know, another day, whatever, it's all good. So I'm gonna get the power wagon and we're gonna do a little bit of a power wagon show here, talk about the power wagon and you know, some of the things that make the power wagon tick, make the power wagon the power wagon. Like for example, the back diffs on the power wagon, the 410s there, they tend to do a pretty good job for towing and truck stuff. Whereas I think these are 282s in the back of this one, Dif differential, rear differential. Um, the gear numbers basically so anyways guys i'm in traffic i'm heading towards the dealership to go pick up the power wagon and return this guy i got her locked in sport mode here on the highway just cruising down the highway and um going to pick up the power wagon finally after nine months just that langley chrysler here and if you look in front of me what's that oh it's a ram 2500 power wagon about time eh so this was my old truck guy or my new truck my new old truck that uh, had a torque converter break. And um, so now it's not broken anymore, it's fixed. So I get the truck back. And I just put these rims on in May, my summer tires, and uh, never got to use them, never drove them once. Nuts aren't even torqued, so I'll have to torque those on. But I have not driven this since May, mid-May. And then I had all those rentals, rental after rental after rental after rental after rental. So. It's nice to have the truck back. 2500 power wagon, heavy duty. 6.4 liter Hemi, and you can see we got Hellcats here. SRT Challenger Hellcats, wide body Hellcats. Beautiful cars, uh, how much is it? 160 Canadian. You can see those nice SRT Brembo brakes, Hellcats. So we're not getting one of those though. I got 6.4 liter in here, 6.4 Hemi, so let's get in. Let's see what we can do. So, inside of the power wagon here, guys, I got my radios back, VHF, CB. So, let's fire her up, see what we're doing here. Oh yeah, leave the door open so we can get the exhaust note. So we picked the power wagon up and dropped the charger off. Bittersweet, sad, but I did. I do have my truck back, so I guess you know that is a big plus in the whole thing. But it was fun test driving all the various different vehicles, you know, V6 Durango, the 5.7 Hemi, the 1500. This is a 6.4 Hemi. It's a bigger, right, 2500. And then the obviously the V6 and the charger. And the charger would have preferred the V8, but whatever, it's a rental. I'm not going to play better better than driving a Prius, say so, yeah. that. So anyways, thought I'd tell you guys a bit of the, it's kind of a funny contrast because the Charger was a racing machine, right? Obviously, everybody knows, you know, since the 60s, 70s, everybody's known what Charger is. Um, So big racing pedigree, right? Mopar, huge racing community, you know, jailbreaks, all that, red eyes, SRT Hellcats, demons, you know, chaos, everything like that. So that's the racing aspect of uh, Ram, right? still want this dodge but the other side of the coin 
I mean, typically, you know, you don't think of trucks as performance vehicles, although I would, maybe the Raptor for its, uh, you know, performance and stuff, because that is actually quite a performance pickup. But usually when we're talking about pickups, we're talking about towing and stuff like that versus performance. But the cool thing about this power wagon, it's, a, it's quite an off-road machine. You know, depending on who you talk to, the guy's got tremors, guy's got um, bisons and stuff. But I think it's I think it's the off-road truck. I don't think you can get better than the power wagon. And the only reason I say that is because it has solid axles, front and rear, right? Salt like solid axles, no no in, independent front suspension or independent suspension, uh, which makes it way better for articulation. It has a disconnecting sway bar, which to, to my knowledge, the only other vehicles that come with that are Jeeps. And obviously, this is a heavy-duty pickup, not a Jeep. And the sway bar disconnect works really well for when you're on uneven ground and you you've got one one side of your axle is up off the ground and you want to you want to get back on the ground and get more traction by disconnecting the sway bar you you have more articulation so that bar can articulate can find the ground more which then gives you instead of having three wheels on the ground you've got four right so sway bar disconnect we got to you can't go over like two, uh, 20 kilometers an hour otherwise it auto shuts off because like, like it, but it sounds like if you don't have the sway bar connected, you tip right over, right? But the off-roading case, the sway bar disconnect is really nice because um, you get more articulation. Then it's got lockers front and rear. So the Fords, the Chevys, the GMCs of the world, right? Um, they'll have lockers, especially the, you know, GMC, they got that G80, right? Which, you know, say what you will about it. Some guys like, some guys don't, but like it's that auto locker. So it, when it sets a slip, the locker engages. Whereas this is this is not like that. I can I can choose to lock in my axles or or my diffs, sorry, or unlock them, both front and rear. And as far as I know, that's the only pickup truck uh, in that can do that at all. Not even in this segment. Just literally the only pickup truck uh, full stop that can do that. So that's kind of cool. And then to top it all off with its off-roading uh, pedigree, it's got the 10,000 pound winch. So if the lockers aren't enough, the sway bar is not enough, the four low, um, and it's a pretty low heavy ratio too. I think it's a two, 2.73 to one. So that's two, two and basically two and three quarter rotations to one rotation, right? On the transfer case. So that gives you lots of low gearing to get up those hills and stuff. So it'd be kind of thing I could just throw it four low and I don't even have to give it gas because it's got such low crawl that it basically just moves along. If all of that, isn't enough. You still find yourself stuck or, you know, you get beached or drive into a ditch by accident for whatever reason, because, you know, driving off-road, there's all kinds of variables off-road. Then you got a winch on the front, 10,000 pound winch. So we're going to Eagle Mountain Park today. Gonna go do some off-roading. Power away. Couldn't do that with the charger. So we're gonna go try it with the power away. That's what this thing's meant to do. Go off-road. So we got lockers, we got sway bar disconnect, we got we got everything we need basically. Gonna go do a line, go do a run through here. Gonna shift into four high. Not gonna lock the uh, axles or anything yet. Or disconnect the sway bar. Let's see what we can get here.
So yeah, you can see the kind of terrain we're dealing with here, right? It's been raining for the past couple days. Just been pounding rain. And so that's what you get, right? So there what used to be a place you could come down here and try and get up the hill, but not anymore. So yeah, you can see guys, it's pretty, pretty nasty though. You wouldn't want to take anything that's not got some serious mud tires and some off-road capability. Here. came through that nice and muddy and wet and disgusting and all that so yeah guys this is mudding so this is the power wagon do a bit of a walk around let's crack the hood let's take a look at this 6.4 see nice and muddy just dripping in mud these are the mud terrains nice deep treads so they can dig in okay Walkers front and rear. Here's the winch, 10,000 pounder. So yeah, here we go. This is the Hemi, 6.4 Hemi. Gorgeous engine, I love it. So, yeah. Alrighty, so we just finished Eagle Mountain Park. That was pretty cool, muddy, it's wet. Uh, a little bit of an off-road demonstration, not too crazy, but it's just a little bit of a couple little hills. So that was good. So anyways, guys, that's going to be it for this Power Wagon video. Talking about the features and the engine. Hope you enjoyed it. Good, nice little contrast to the Charger. And uh, yeah, that'll be it. Sounds much prospector. Oh.